What is your ultimate goal in life? Wow, that is that's a very big that question. is a very deep question. Um, as ultimate goal, uh, just grab it a few seconds. I'd say just use, just to become the best version of myself. All right. So what's your name? My name is Alyssa Bruno. What's your name? My name is Javante. My name is Maisha Smiley. So I'm going around recording stories today, and you said that you had a really good story that you'd like to share. Would you mind um, filling us in? Picture. So what's your name? Brandon Eisen. My name is Julio Casares. Can you spell it for me? J U L I O. And my last name is Casares, C A C E R E S, with oh. hyphen in the A. For a while, I was. I straight, I, you know, I kind of hid from my family and my friends and everything, mm -hmm. but I remember I had my first kiss with a girl when I was like eight, and I was like, yep, this is, this is it, this is it. I have two other friends, so uh, yeah, Tyler and Bernard, they were, uh, they were stealing, they've been stealing from the stores for years now, you know, they've been taking stuff from the stores, and so, at the time, when we were at the store, we weren't with them, but the lady uh, thought I and our friends were stealing stuff. You know, we'd come in every day, and it paid for our stuff, and always left, and never gained it, never made commotion. If you're skipping school, the cardinal rule is to not break any other laws. You right. stop skipping school. Oh, you were skipping and you were stealing. Yeah. It's not a great idea. I'm from a troubled family. My mom raised seven kids, actually, on her home, and I've been homeless multiple times, lived in shelters multiple times, and I grew up in a rough, rough neighborhood. It's a 4th of July party, and I, I kept getting, I kept shoving beer in my face, and I said no until I finally drank it, and that's what began my journey towards alcoholism. I came here to the United States uh, eight years ago, and basically came with my family just in the look for opportunity and education. I didn't know anybody. I didn't know uh, how to speak. I couldn't pay from the cash register. I remember going through Wegmans one time and, and I was just standing there just trying to say something. Um, I don't know, it was just, you know, a huge identity thing for me. I discovered who I am. They had a Kit Kat, man, it was a Kit Kit Kat. I looked me at it and I had it at last second as I didn't want it and I put it back. But I put it by the donuts and we were walking up to the counter to pay for everything else. And this lady who had seen us, she you know had been like, I all the time I was in the store, like you're not stupid, so we obviously realized, but we were doing anything wrong, so we were gonna watch this right. ten next ten years she wants to, not take anything. <laughs> and so one time she thought she had got me. She thought she had caught us so bad. She cooked me and her eyes wide was like Kick Actually, my mom moved us into a better neighborhood. She ended up finding an amazing job and doing well for herself. As the years went on, I got my own life together because at first I was struggling because I was around new environments and I wanted to be the best and coolest kid at school. So then I turned my life around and I actually became an honor student. I got to go to the White House and then eventually I went on high school and I was an honor student in high school as well. And then I decided to come to Corning and I'm an honor student here. I went into the military and I was medically separated and that really kind of crushed me and I'd say that's where my alcoholism really took off. When I got back home, I was drinking, I could drink, God, like two liters of vodka to my face at one point. It wasn't ever every day, but I mean, I would, I would drink to the point where, like, <laughs> I don't even know who I am. Imagine trying to write an essay, you don't speak any English, and I had to do that and, and go to class and and figure it out somehow. You have to have some determination to go towards something in order to be able to do that. We made it through. I mean, uh, I was finally able to to learn English, but it was definitely a challenge. It was not, it was not easy having to overcome all the obstacles and challenges of uh, relationships with people and uh, just adapting to the culture that is so different here. Being biased is confusing, if I'm, honest, yeah. if I'm being honest. Because you don't know, you're like, well, what if I like this person? Am I straight? Or what if I like this person? Am I gay? It changed a lot for me because then I was able to put in stone that, you know, this is what I like, this is what I want. She said, no, it's your pocket. And I was like, no, it's on that. I put it back on the donut top. She's like, show, uh, very show me. So I go over there, show the Kit Kat, only went up there, just was there, not dusty, so it's good to be there for five seconds. Yeah. She was so mad almost. She was so mad she couldn't yeah. catch us. She was mad that we weren't breaking the law. It was not weird to be. 
the store owner is mad he didn't do anything. Um, seeing my mom struggle is really what pushed me to do better because she tried her best. But when you have no one around that actually supports you, you you don't have much to go for. But since my mom supported me, she pushed me. She keeps pushing me until this day, and that's where I'm in now. I mean, I was just drinking all the time, and I and I got my license because I hadn't had it yet, and that lasted for about six months and I got my first DWI. And two weeks later I got my second DWI. And then a month later I got my third DWI. They made me go to rehab and I was there for about a month. And then my uncle died. And it was the first death I ever dealt with that no one I've ever known really has ever died. So I didn't know how to handle it and I went home. They let me go home for like two weeks and that was just a disaster waiting to happen. May 2nd I got my fourth felony DWI. Yes, I thought it was a good idea to drink and drive again. Mm -hmm. So I just had enough and I checked myself into Loyola again May 8th. May 2nd is the day, the last day I've ever drank so far. Really? So I'm coming up. Um, Congratulations. I know, That's almost huge. Six months. What is your drive in life? What makes you so determined to be successful? It's just, I think it's just natural in me. Uh, I'm just driven as an individual. I, I, I like people. Uh, I'm just, I like to help people. I like to share my experience and see if maybe I can help others along the way and um, maybe we can just make the world better somehow. Coming out and finding myself has been one of the best things that's ever happened to me because it's made me feel better about myself and like just knowing that, like I said, like this is who I am and this is what I want. Thank you so much for sharing. Of course. But while that was going on, the other friends we did come in with were stealing the entire store. Me and like, I think it was you take off our bag and all we got the store. Yeah, after, we, after that, we were taking our bags off. Yeah, she didn't, even though he's never caught us doing anything wrong, we still take our bags off. Every time. Oh my goodness. Until we, you know, until we grew up a little bit, realized, <laughs> you know, she can't make us do anything, we're adults now. Yeah. But it's just like, no, it's funny, years ago, but it's, it's a funny story, but, <laughs> you know, she literally was looking at the wrong kids, the wrong kids. Right. It's a donut to look like, it's a cover store, yeah. and you'll catch the real thieves. You know, I mean, they were our friends, so we're glad they didn't get caught. But they never did get caught around me, but, yeah. you know, it was, uh, it's funny. It was a real, uh, kind of like a wide open story that people really are watching you and want you to make them. Yes. If this may resonate with anybody that's seeing this, um, Try to find your goal. Try to find your 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 thing that makes you click and motivates you, and try to get excited about the day or whatever it is, and uh, try, go after it. It really is worthwhile. And um, I'm making little changes in my life, and I'm starting to realize that that really does make a difference and makes it worthwhile. So even though life is just is a mess, it can it's, it's crazy out there. Um, we see crazy things every day, and we put through challenges and whatever it is, some opportunities, some things are good, some things are bad, but you have to see past through all that. You know, if, if you have something that you look for after, you can realize that it really is worthwhile and maybe you can make a good impact on other people. Press start, stop. I have the button. Okay, so okay. say something. I'm saying something. You're saying something. Talking, talking, yeah. sound. All right, let's okay. see let's what see we have the... recorded.